What's up guys, hope everybody is doing fine. Yes, I was wrong, I admit. I put my money on Ling Duran winning this tournament in Vikon Z. That is still unfortunately for the Chinese people. He didn't win it. Fortunately for us, we witnessed a lot of beautiful games here. Uh, there in Netherlands. And the one, my personal favorite, is the one that the future winner of the tournament uh, played. This is the current world champion. Magnus Carlsen, he had the white pieces against Richard Rapport, or Richard Rapport, I'm not sure how exactly to pronounce his name, but in any case, he had to pay him back for what he did to him the last year uh, there at the same place. So even though he chose a quiet opening in that game, even though he featured the bishop on g2, maybe he just read my uh, my ebook on chessable about this opening with reverse colors, and he decided to give it a try as white because it's even more fun then. Uh, in any case, he uh, got very good position out of the opening with a very strong novelty, by the way. So all of this has been played before. I think that the move for rook b8 is probably an inaccuracy in this case. Uh, most likely black needs to bring this bishop out as quick as possible. Try to put some pressure on that pawn on e4 as soon as he can. This is one thing. Uh, not to give a chance to his opponent to regroup his pieces the way that he did it in the game, but could the report even expect what was going to happen in that game? The key here is that after this knight is removed away from the e4 square, black wants to always bring this bishop out, and this is how he is equalizing in similar situations. Ganguly did it very well against Darius Switch from the St. Louis tournament 2018. However, um, Rapport made a move which, in my opinion, was useless. Uh, as I don't really think that he is even threatening to play them of rook b4, and this pressure on b2 is most likely um, just nothing right now. So Magnus did what he wanted to do anyway, so he played the move c4, he played the move b3, then he developed the bishop, and here he came out uh, he came up with this beautiful novelty, queen to e1, which looks ugly at the side, but if you have a deeper look into the position, you will understand that this prophylactical move is actually killing all the play that Black had um, the way that Ganguly did it in the previous game. So first of all, to start with, um, the move um, bishop b7 is no longer possible even because of the move e5. And one, once that these two pawns are treated, Black is always having problems with the weaknesses on c5, in particular in the one on e6. So this is White's position. Uh, to the end of the game, and everybody knows how well Magnus is playing these positions when he is um, having slight positional but long-term advantage. This is one thing. The other thing is that the move knight d7, which was played in the game and which intends bishop f6, now can be met with rook d1. And it's once again not so easy for black to free himself. He wants to play bishop f6, but this fails tactically after uh, bishop takes, or rather not even tactically, but positionally after all these streets and queen to e3, white is going to regain the pawn, and the one on c5 cannot be defended. Once that he regains the pawn, he would be uh, having a much better end game afterwards, as uh, or middle game with uh, two connected passers on the queen side against these two, which are not going anywhere. So if, for example, knight d7, white can simply go queen d2, followed by queen d6, and little by little he will regain the pawn. Ideally, he wants to play endgame as the two connected passers, supported by the bishop, supported by the knight, and the rex from behind cannot be stopped. So therefore, uh, this position is much, much better for white. On the other hand, a move like knight e5 was probably the less evil, um, but then there comes queen c3. So the queen on e1 is also helping uh, into some other things. Sometimes it is hitting the pawn on c5, sometimes the pawn on d6, sometimes it is helping the pawn to go to e5, and here it is also creating meeting threats, making it difficult for black to actually uh, install a knight on d4, and in this uh, quite forcing line again, uh, white is regaining again the pawn on c5, next he is attacking the knight on c6, and ultimately he is getting into that position where uh, his queen side pawns are way better than the central pawns of his opponent, and he has this bind on the opponent's position thanks to his active queen on c5. Probably this was the less evil for the second player though. Rapport played bishop b7, and then came queen to c3 once more, threatening checkmate. They repeated the most twice, but I doubt that this was Magnus' intention to make a draw. 
Um, what's important here is that if white, if sorry, if black ever captures on b2, after knight takes b2, he can never protect the pawn on d6. So this is why uh, black just waited with bishop b7. White, however, kept on playing with the move f4. And he has the obvious threat of pushing that pawn even further on e5 when this knight on d7 is going to hang. And this is one of the ideas. The other idea is that if uh, the rook ever comes on d8 to overprotect that pawn on d6, now we see another use case for this queen on d2. It can back up this bishop in the battle for the dark squares and ultimately into the battle for the d-file. And this is also a big, big advantage for the first player. Finally, a move like bishop c6 that we have seen so many times, uh, and which worked before that in the game of Ganguly, intending queen b7 or hoping that this knight will uh, go back and then black can regroup his forces probably with bishop f6 so first rook d8 knight f8 then bishop to f6 this will fail again tactically as e5 is coming just in time the knight on d7 is hanging and if they have a capture on g2 they'll be in between capture on d6 and in this line after bishop takes d6 probably even queen takes d6 is interesting but the simplest is king g2 and these two hanging with these two hanging um, white is going to win a piece. Uh, so this is the reason why report played the move e5. Normally black refrains from playing moves like e5 as they are a very solid proof of failure in their strategy, moves like this one. They give the d5 square forever, they also make sure that this pawn on d6 is becoming a backward and a weak one, and this bishop is getting buried alive because of that. So all these things are happening to to black and i would call this a very difficult strategically position plus magnus keep on keeps on playing very very powerful chess with the move bishop c3 now he's threatening bishop a5 this is not a move that can be stopped and before he jumps with the knight on c3 he also managed to bring this bishop on the optimal square which is preventing black from playing rook d8 and defending that that pawn on d6 Next, EF4, G takes F4 happened in the game, and here is the funniest moment of, 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 the, whole, of, of the whole event, um, of the whole happening. Magnus played the move E5, and I have awarded it with an exclamation mark. It's a very strong concept, as the world champion admitted afterwards, except that it was also a blunder. And he, he thought that he is just winning the game outright, but he missed that. In this line, black can actually take on e5 with the pawn, and he can keep the queen on b7, defending the knight on uh, d7. For some reason, he f he just calculated this, and then indeed, this is not even possible, so white is going to capture the pawn on d6 for free, and he's going to win the game. Luckily for him, uh, this oversight um, helped him create a masterpiece, as he next jumps with the knight on d5. Uh, now white has plenty of threats and huge compensation for the sacrifice pawn. To start with, if uh, black ever captures on f4, there will be the move bishop c7, which is immediately gaining back the exchange. The rook cannot move anywhere because there will be a discovered check, discovered attack, excuse me, against the queen on b7, it would be won immediately. So this is why I report play the move e4, hoping that his opponent will take and he can get some counterplay after uh, say bishop f6, eventually bishop d4, but Magnus was not interested about uh, about that pawn, he was interested into the attack against the opponent's king, so he went bishop c3, threatened checkmate, and again, this is born out of necessity, normally black would love to defend himself with a move like bishop f8, but the problem is that there comes f5, threatening bishop takes g7, followed by f6 and checkmate, and if uh, queen c6, then white even has the time uh, besides regaining the pawn with something normal like a rookie one and taking that pawn he can even bring the rook upon the third rank for the king's side attack and this is very very nasty and uh, most likely just unbearable for the second player it also became unbearable for him after the move f6 king h1 is uh, Again, very nice move by the world champion, so he's bringing everybody into the attack before he delivers the final blow. He once again ignored that pawn on e4 all the time. He was heading for the king. If black now ever tries pushing pawns, that would be immediately game over after f5, as g5 is not even defending the king side, is just giving away that pawn. So bishop f8 was played into the game, but then came knight e3. 
and once more um, white is doing everything that was needed for him uh, to win the game next he is going to rook to d5 and next this rook is coming on h5 and he's threatening either queen h3 or queen g6 and checkmate on h7 or checkmate on the g file rapport defended well with the move queen e6 had he had gone for g6 th there was this a little rook h5 blow which was left behind the scenes we didn't see it performed on the board but it would have been nice if we have seen it uh, the threat is not only queen g6 but the preliminary capture on h7 followed by queen g6 and then this checkmate uh, so that's why queen e6 to bring the queen to help the king and uh, to prevent queen to g6 but the queen is coming on h3 and uh, finally this weakening has been forced so it would have been either g6 or h6 if h6 there was knight f5 and on king h7 uh, there was the spectacular blow knight x h6 and then rook d5 i check this one with the computer it looks like a very good line uh, it's not that easy for human to find but uh, actually this one is not even good for white excuse me I, I made a mistake here after king h8 and this line the good move would have been bishop a5 which is preserving white's edge i suspect however however that the world champion would have played something simple like queen g4 just keeping all the advantages of the position and preparing uh, some sacrifices on uh, g7 and h6 in any case once more i think that h6 was the right move for black uh, because g6 just um, weaken him him too much his position too much and then uh, f5 finally happened and black cannot keep his flank intact he tried knight e5 but had to resign after knight e5 fg6 knight takes g6 and the beautiful finish of that beautiful game bishop takes f6 sacrifice followed by rook h7 and then a nice geometrical motif happened as uh, the rook on e8 is hanging it reminded me a little bit of these two games of Petrosian versus uh, one was against Pasky and the other one I think was against Simagin where he also sacrificed his uh, queen uh, his material for some knight forks but in any case beautiful achievement for the for the world champion and very important win by the way as at the end of the day he uh, managed to win the first place just for half a point he uh, got half a point away from his uh, closest Persia Anish Giri so quite a beautiful tournament check the games I will send them all for you that I have annotated for chess.com if you haven't done this ton of stuff there to memorize to learn and to enjoy and as usual thanks for watching this and thanks for supporting me see you next time